the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4. Hallelujah. And beginning at verse 46, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4. Beginning at verse 46. So Jesus came again unto Canaan of Galilee, where he made the water wine. There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, Say, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour. And which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea unto Galilee. God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning because everything we need is in you. And anything is possible at any time. And as we are here now, some have come seeking and searching to hear a word from you. Speak to us all in this place as only you can. We bind every distraction. Every enemy, every confused spirit, we bind it in Jesus' name today. Satan, you have no authority here. The blood still works. And we plead the blood over everyone in this room. Over our hearts, over our minds, and over this service. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to just talk just briefly. It happened when he said it. It happened when he said it. Of course, I don't have time to develop all of the theological intricates of this particular passage this morning. But here again, we are in the Gospel of St. John dealing with Jesus and his magnificent ministry of healing with signs and wonders. Truly indeed, church, there was nobody in the world and ever will be like Jesus Christ. He is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. He is the power of God present to humanity, being Emmanuel. He is the living water. 
He is the bread of life. He is the true vine, the good shepherd, the great I am. And of course, when we see him, we see the glory of the Lord upon him as the Christ, as the Messiah. And here in this lesson this morning, we have a man that is reaching out to Jesus. He meets Jesus coming back into the land of Canaan. The man is from Capernaum. He meets Jesus by way of the Galilean Sea. And he makes a request to the Lord to, to heal his son. In fact, he asked him if he would come down and heal his son. And Jesus uh, doesn't necessarily say no or yes. At first, he introduces this concept that we should believe whether or not we get what we want. Except, except you see signs and wonders. You have a difficult issue concerning believing. Sounds much like us today that unless there are bells and whistles... Unless everything is happening expeditiously and in a way that we like it, we would drop God off at the nearest exit. And they left Jesus. A lot of them did when he wasn't doing what they wanted him to do. This generation seeks after a sign and after wonders in order to believe. But my Bible says, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. In other words, even if God hasn't fixed it like you want it, don't give up on God because he's not finished yet. There's always a reason when there is a delay in your breakthrough. And it has little to do with God and all to do with us. This man says, I need you to heal my son. It's an urgent. My son will not live unless you intervene. He's at the point of death when I left him. It's about a day's journey. I happily came across you and I have this one request that you would just heal my son. Unlike the, the, the nobleman that came to Jesus and said, Lord, if you just speak the word, my servant will be healed. You don't have to come to my house, just speak the word. And your words have power. Your words can travel. Your, your words can get in the air. Your words can find my issue. There is no limit to God's ability. And he can touch anyone, anywhere, at any time. And if we can't go there, our prayer can Somebody need to hear that this morning. That your prayer can go places that you can't go. Your prayer can get in places that Delta can't fly you. Your prayer can get past security and do something behind closed doors that you couldn't do even if you were there. But unlike that nobleman that said, Lord, just speak the word. This nobleman is specific, saying, come with me. I, I really would feel more comfortable if you actually left your business. Whatever you're doing, drop it and come home with me. 
seems like an urgent matter. This is not something uh, that is just, uh, we can wait till next week. I, I need you to do this right away. In other words, Jesus, I, I don't know what you had on your schedule, but please just cancel everything and come because this is my child. My child is at the very point of death. And Jesus doesn't seem to be concerned at all. He, he just talks about, well, you all got to see all these miracles to believe. But that doesn't faze the nobleman. He says, sir, if you just come down, I know you can help me. When people get desperate, see, there's a, a cry that's different from inspiration. There's a cry of desperation. If you've ever been there, you know when you're desperate, you don't have a whole lot of attachments to it. I, I just need some help. When you're real desperate, you don't care about what the interest rate is. You don't care about APR. You don't care about annual. You're just trying to get the money. Can I preach in here? This man is desperate. He's asking for help. He knows that he has no one else to turn to. And Jesus says, if you just go now, your son will live. Oh, what a blessing that is to know uh, that, that, that Jesus has the answer right there, right then. He said, I don't have to go with you. I, I'm just going to speak this word into your life today that your son is going to live. The man believed the words of Jesus. Isn't that something? He caught on by faith. He didn't have to see Jesus go with him now. He believed that everything was going to be all right. Just based strictly, totally, completely, only on what Jesus said. And somebody came to church this morning and all you need to know is God is going to turn it around for you. Who am I preaching to up in here? All you need to know is Jesus is on your side. All you need to know is he will fight your battle if you just be still. In fact, the battle ain't yours anyway. It belongs to the Lord. And all you got to do is just trust in God. No matter how it look, no matter how you feel, no matter how bad it may appear, the battle is not yours. God gonna fight your battle. Just stand still and see. I wish I had time to really preach that. This whole concept, Jesus says to him, go your way for your son shall live. Isn't it amazing? This happens. This happens, church. Jesus speaks this word to the man. And at the seventh hour of that day, he speaks the word to the man. The man, the Bible says, believe the word. And he left going his way. And while he was on his way, he ran across some of his servants. And God always got a confirmation. There's always someone there. Look at somebody say, you're not in this by yourself, baby. You're not going through by yourself. God always has someone to be there to help you, to support you, to hold you up, to encourage you, to speak a word into your life. And here they are, the servant said, your son is alive. Isn't it amazing now? He had believed God even though it didn't look like it had happened. Somebody need to get this right now. That he has already spoken a word over you. And all you're waiting for is the manifestation. It happened yesterday. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Somebody ought to touch your neighbor and say, it's already done. It happened yesterday. You got healed yesterday. You got your miracle yesterday. You got your breakthrough yesterday. You got your answer yesterday. It's already done. But don't.
don't lose faith. All you got to do is just wait until your change comes. I feel like preaching a little bit this morning. When he asked them what time did it happen, he asked them what hour did this occur. It was the very same time that the Lord said it. I got to get out of here. Y'all know I got to travel today. But the reality is what God has said shall always come to pass. Somebody need to get that in your spirit today. What the Lord has spoken shall surely come to pass. His word will not return for it. And all I need to know is what God said. I got my hand in the wine and chain and I'm waiting to hear what thus said the Lord. Because he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And when God has given you a word, somebody in here got a promise that God has already spoken over you. And you will not die until that thing is manifested in your life. Lift your hand and shout, it's already done. It's already done. Do you believe it today? It's already done. When did it happen, Ella Cannon? It happened when the Lord told me it was done. It happened when God spoke it into my life. It's already done. Everyone standing all over this building today. Some of you keep getting distracted looking at the wrong thing lean on what God said to you and his word will never fail God we thank you today for this opportunity to break the bread of life we thank you for your word and someone here today is leaning all we have is your word have you spoken, shall you not perform it? It's already done. No matter what it looked like. No matter how we feel. It's already done. And Lord, as we prepare to leave from this place, go with us and stand by us and keep us in the center of your will. Till we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen.